个相声，今天。Welcome back, viewers. It's James Com, your half-assed, half-masked reporter. We're gonna run into the Miguel Abreu Gallery and look at an exhibition of one painting. by R.H. Quaitman, titled, The Sun Does Not Move, Dear John's, Chapter 35, 2020. Well, I was pedaling through the neighborhood a couple of days ago after closing time and I peeked in here. I think Miguel was working on his computer, but I saw this painting and, uh, well, decided I'd have to come in and at least take a look at this. I'll read a little bit from the press release. This is the statement from R.H. This somewhat melodramatic painting turned out to be an unusual one for me. I worked on it from late January to now. It came about after I wrote a short essay on Jasper John's flags for his upcoming retrospective at the Whitney and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. After writing it, I thought it was only fair but I would try to paint an American flag painting too. Okay, well that's what I kind of, uh, I got an echo thinking that this made me kind of think of Jasper Johns and his long series of American flag paintings. Uh, I think one of the other things I was intrigued with, I'm working on a map painting of the Bowery and the Lower East Side and RH and a group of other artists actually had, they organized their own exhibition space here called Orchard. And I guess it ran for three or four years back in the, the mid aughts, the late aughts. And uh, well, another thing that uh, R.H. did was that uh, she was very influential in the uh, Guggenheim Museum's recent show of Hilma Alf Klint. And uh, 
Well, when they had that exhibition, RH had her own kind of exhibition at the top of the ramp. Right, so she also talks about this being one of the largest panel paintings that she's done. Okay, so this is gesso on wood, acrylic, silk screen, ink, gouache, oil, and singularity black. Oh, I wonder if this is the, the new black pigment that someone uh, formulated, supposedly the, the blackest black pigment that uh, has ever come to market. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> So that was a glance at the sun does not move, dear Johns, by R. H. Quaitman. Dear Miguel Abreu, I'm gonna roll on. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. It's your half-assed reporter, James Conley, on the bike. And we are on the Bowery. Special shout out to our friends in Hanoi, Vietnam, Beijing, Dallas. We're gonna, uh, slip into Arsenal. Stay tuned. And we'll try to take a glance at a show titled This Sacred Vessel. It's getting near closing time, so we're gonna have to run fast through this. Bamboo Gili. Untitled Girl on a Field 2019. It's oil on linen. Well, I uh, saw the show through the window and, uh, well, people are still kind of locked down. But this place was open. I didn't have to make an appointment. Eliza Griffiths, Urban Narratives, 2015. So all on camera 58 by 68. Also, I, uh, I was just talking to the, the gallerist and, uh, he uh, confirmed an idea that I had. It seems like a lot of these artists are Canadians, which I think is interesting. Uh, well, I was interviewed by a couple of gentlemen that have a blog up in Toronto. It's called The Winging It. Charles Hackaboth and Mark Cohen. Okay, I kind of like uh, the rendering here. I'm gonna keep moving. Marion Wagshaw. Tequila Sunrise. acrylic on canvas 72 by 69 well I like the uh, rendering of the forms and uh, yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of drawing here so I kind of uh, Enjoy the surface. The 
that Marion has built up. Kind of makes me think of uh, Leon Golub. This is a selection of paintings, little paintings by Walter Scott. Actually, collages. It's the worst person ever. Those are 14 by 11. Collage acrylic pencil crayon. Okay, I like the, uh, the pant legs. Bamboyo Gili, is that the way it's pronounced? An ode to Matthew Wong. I was actually looking at this and just thinking that this had an echo of Matthew Wong. We visited his show about, uh, well, his memorial show about six months ago. run in and take a quick sweep around the main gallery. One of the uh, I think intriguing aspects of this show and not only this show but a lot of work that's being done now with the popularity of figurative painting is kind of trending these days. This is Nadia Wahid. Nirvana 2019 acrylic on canvas 66 by 48. Well as I was saying one of the things about the uh, a lot of work that is being done and shown at least in the uh, commercial gallery world, it's, a lot of it is figurative. And, uh, well, I've been getting some comments as I've been pointing this out, someone was actually comparing this to uh, what became known as the zombie formalists, a term that Walter Robinson coined and uh, well, their, their little snooty name was that they considered a lot of the work being done now is uh, zombie figurative work. This is Shelley Adler, Catherine and a Cigarette. Oil on Canvas 38 by 38. It makes me think of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Payton a little bit, maybe uh, even uh, Alex Katz. This is an interesting piece. Marion Wagshaw. Pusinelia bathing. They said uh, Marion's got a very nice uh, technique for rendering her forms. 15 and a half by 14 inches. <laughs> oh gosh, I wonder what that little bag is for.
more Shelley Adler. It's titled Lee Miller, 2019. by 40. Kind of like the uh, the palette that is sliding towards the rose magentas. Cool blues. B-A-M-B-O-U-G-I-L-I. It's titled Purple Painting 2019, Oil on Linen, 54 by 72. And, uh, well, as I was saying, there was a kind of an echo of Matthew Wong. I think Matthew might have been Canadian, I'm not sure. And, uh, well, of course, it's a tragic story, but uh, I think Matthew committed suicide about, I don't know, a year ago, 10 months ago. And since then, one of his paintings has gone to auction and sold for over a million dollars, I believe. This is Nadia Wahid. Conjoined Twins 2019, acrylic on canvas, 48 by 60. Well, I kind of looked at this and thought that it reminded me of uh, some of the uh, Federalist style uh, neoclassical murals that were being done for the WPA and then I get a little closer and see that uh, well there are a lot of other various narrative possibilities going on here but that is a very uh, kind of classical composition we need are some uh, some horses oh boy it's probably getting past closing time Let's see if they kick us out Sarah Latovsky waiting by a bowl of lemons 2020 Okay, well, this definitely echoes uh, an Alex Katz. Although I, uh, I like Sarah's brushwork. It's very urgent. Yeah. It's on campus. And uh, gosh, I even like the drips. I don't think Alex would ever leave drips like that. Okay, we're gonna run in the back room. It's Janet Werner. The Old Objectivity, 2017, oil on canvas. Okay, so that's nice. We got kind of a uh, trompe l'oeil photograph on a string or Something taped on a wall. 36 by 24. Well, one of the reasons that I came in and looked at the show was that, uh, well, we'll wrap up looking at somebody I've been following for about 15 years now. It's more Janet Warner. It's titled Carter 2020, oil on canvas 26 by 33. Uh, back to the idea of uh, zombie figuration, 
I, uh, I don't know whether that would be an appropriate title. I think that, uh, for one thing, there's a lot more potential directions, areas, territories of figurative work that uh, I think would kind of cancel out some simple uh, rubric that you could classify all this stuff under. I think the other thing is that uh, because figurative art has been around for so long and has so many historical and cultural associations that it would be a different uh, a different kind of thing. I mean, unless you had something like photorealism that would tie them all together. Nadia Wahid. Rite of Passage 2018, acrylic on canvas, 54 and a half by 46. Again, I think Nadia's got the kind of a uh, classical sensibility. Everything is pretty, uh, pretty flat, so she's keeping her paint thin and uh, kind of drawing with a very uh, wet brush technique. So she's got a nice uh, complex yet subtle palette. Okay, well, <laughs> we're gonna end up looking at this piece by Kim Dorland. I uh, probably have covered at least two or three of Kim's shows. I started seeing Kim's work, oh, probably in the early aughts at maybe some of the art fairs. Uh, now, if I can dig back in my memory, I think it was a cat named Jamie Angel who had a gallery in Toronto that I first came across his work with. This is titled Self-Portrait. And see, this is painted in 2009, so, you know, another 10 years or so, it'll probably dry out considering, okay, the oil paint is probably three inches thick. Thirty-six by thirty. Well, that was a run-through of Sacred Vessel here at Arsenal. You can like this, share, link it to your social media sites, and you can subscribe, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. Just ask you to say thank you, Kate. <laughs>